In this video, we will cover how the whole genome sequencing system used by the NMRS identifies mycobacteria. The starting point for whole genome sequencing is a positive culture containing mycobacteria, and thus mycobacterial DNA. A positive culture containing mycobacterium tuberculosis contains enormous numbers of copies of the entire TB genome, a circular string of DNA nearly 4.5 million bases long. The sequencing technology used by the NMRS doesn't try to sequence the entire genome in one go. Instead, it breaks it into a very large number of short strings of bases, called reads, much like breaking a book down into the different words that make up its text. Once the sequencer has generated all of these words, a powerful cluster of computers compares the words against a database containing all of the unique words for thousands of bacterial species. In this case, the first word is unique to Mycobacterium tuberculosis as is the next one, and indeed the three after that. However, not all words are unique to a particular species. These next few words are found in a number of different mycobacteria, so it can only be assigned to the genus, not species level. In a perfect world, the cultures undergoing the sequencing process would consist only of mycobacteria. Although decontamination techniques can prevent the growth of other bacteria, their DNA can survive this process and can therefore be found during sequencing. In sputum samples, bacteria that live in the mouth and airways are commonly found. Here, there are a few words for a variety of such bacteria. Once every word has been assigned to a different species, the total number for each species or genus can be calculated. In this example, there are eight words only found in mycobacteria, with five of them being specific to Mycobacterium tuberculosis. There were a smaller number of words from other contaminating bacterial species. In a real clinical sample, these words usually number in the millions. Now that we know which bacteria is present in the largest amount, the sequencing system can choose a matching reference genome, in this case for TB, and try to line up all of the words in the sample against it. This process is known as mapping. In genome mapping, there are two key numbers. First is mapping coverage. This is the amount of the reference genome that the matching words have been found for in the clinical sample. The higher the percentage of coverage, the more confident you can be that you have the right species. The second key number is depth of coverage. This is the average number of times that every individual base in the reference genome has appeared in the data from the clinical sample. For instance, if a base was found 10 times, this is referred to as a depth of 10. The greater the depth, the more sure you can be that you are getting the right answer. If the coverage and depth are good enough, you can confidently decide which mycobacteria is present. In summary, the genome of the clinical isolate is read in small sections, not in one long continuous chain. These small sections are then compared to a large database of sequences unique to various bacterial species. The species for which most unique sequences are found is chosen as the reference. Then the reads from the clinical sample are lined up, or mapped, against this reference genome. And if the coverage and depth of the reading are high enough, the species is confirmed.